How's it going, guys? I just thought I'd show you my newest setup. And we've always had the one PWM controller that originally started on this uh, lithium bank. It's uh, got a second one now. And what I've done is I've set this up so we can have um, one input, which is this line coming up here, feeding two PWM controllers. One which is set to charge a lithium bank, one that's set to charge a sealed acid bank, or maintenance free with acid bank, whatever. So now what I've got, or any car battery, etc. In uh, flooded lead acid, sealed lead acid, whatever, we can charge them all. So the way this is set up is um, top charge controller is lead acid, bottom one is lithium. At 12.4 heading to the lithium like the lithium packs at 12.4 and charging at the moment as you can see by a little arrow directing to the battery pack we at 13.1 in the sealed pack which is awesome I'm really happy with that that's hasn't done anything for a couple of days it's just been sitting there charging but to be sitting there static at 13.1 is awesome so because it's only a smallish panel and it's not no it's bright enough not super bright outside. The one that's putting the lower voltage in for the pack to charge, which is this one, is getting all the charge. As you can see, the other one's not even flashing to say it's charging. So if we go and disconnect a feed wire, the open circuit voltage of the panel jumps to the 20s, like so. Now watch it dip and pulse because it's charging the lead acid bank. This then means that my lithium bank down here, if it's been used, will get charged first. So once the other charge control starts kicking in, top one kicks back out. So that means once this one's charged and full of it's nearly 600 watt hours of goodness then these two will start charging. We've got about 200 amp hours here when they were new, so probably a bit over 150 nowadays, I guess. And we're not going to be in perfect condition, let's say 150 amp hours. Uh, about 12 volts there. We've got another 55 there. So it's going to take a little while for the solar panel to charge them at any rate. It's uh, only a 40 watt solar panel. Uh, but now, when I do buy a bigger battery, a oh, bigger solar panel, sorry. It'll charge that one faster. Once that one's charged, it'll work on these ones. So what I'm thinking about doing is using this one with the power inverter like we uh, originally were through the big Anderson plug. Um, just to you know, run the lab power supply, run bits and pieces in here while I'm filming, even run laptops or whatever. And then I'm thinking about using the lead acid bank for running lighting. Um, got a lot of LED work lights and stuff like that that I could run off this bank for free. That are uh, they're still not real critical with their capacities. I've got a thousand watt inverter somewhere laying around that I've got to find that I want to connect to these two because a um, thousand watt inverter would be great on them. Now that they've got tons of uh, Capacity, a good capacity anyway. It's let's say it's nearly three times as much as that, even though they're heavy as hell. But combined, they owe me about I don't know twenty five dollars. So uh, might as well use them while I've got them, and we can go and get them recycled later on, and pretty much get all their money back. So yeah, that's how you have a single source. piggybacked into two charge controllers. Now if your battery banks on your two separate charge controllers were at similar voltages, see there's obviously a voltage step between these two of about 0.5 of a volt. Um, if they were the same, they'd probably share a bit of charge, or if this was as flat as what that is, they'd probably share if this was at 10 volts and that was at 12 volts, this would get it first. 
what it's going to allow it to do is just not waste any time when the sun's out. So before what I was doing is disconnecting one charge controller from that bank, connected it to this battery. Upon doing that I had to alter the um, stop where it stops charging because that stops at 12.6 and this wants to stop towards 15. So like if I didn't remember to do that at some stage and hooked it up to that, I could potentially come home to that at uh, you know, 13 or so volts, well and truly over voltage and in a dangerous situation. So now, that's the lithium one, that's the lead acid one. If I pick up a car battery from the scrapyard, if I have a flat car battery, it's as simple as pulling the lead off. These little jumper cables, connecting them up to said battery, and uh, coming back tomorrow and the sun will have charged it for me for free. So yeah, I thought I'd give you an update on these PWMs, both working sweet again. Plus I've also got four USB ports at, I think they're 3 amp combined, so I've got 6 amps USB. Yeah, for charging cameras, uh, GoPro batteries, phone batteries, whatever you will like for free. So uh, I've removed the stupid watt hour meter there. If you know of a good one of these that either has a battery for a memory or has the ability to turn off when the sun goes down and then fire up and just continue on the next day or is better for logging, let me know because I will buy one. But that's been deleted for now because it's a pain in the ass. So yeah, hopefully it helps someone out. Thanks for watching guys, catch you on the next one.